Okay, so I'm introducing to you guys the new point to multipoint devices. I know you guys have um, probably heard they were going to be released soon, but we officially have them. We have stock. Um, these are very um, comparable to the point to point devices that we already sell. It's kind of a step in between the DLB and the point to point. One of the limitations of our point to points is that it's always been only point to point, but it has, you know, industrial hardware, you know, metal cases and very, very durable. So the option to add the point to multipoint has been something that's kind of brewing for a while. And this is using the same hardware and kind of beefed up specs from the DLB products. So the way that we accomplish this is instead of having the devices configurable through the web interface, whether they're an access point or a station, they are dedicated to their purpose. So you have to buy either a base station or a subscriber unit, and that is their purpose. And you can have multiple subscriber units, just like in the DLB series, but you have to have at least one of them dedicated as your base station. So in this case, we have two models of base station and three models of subscriber units. And they look very similar to the point-to-point -point hardware if you're looking at the point-to-point -point hardware. What we've done with the base station is beefed up your CPU and all gigabit ports on all the devices. So this allows for a lot more load balancing and a lot more data throughput. So we've got these, um, it's got a 2.4 gigahertz managed radio, radio in device, which allows through configuration through your tablet or your smartphone, as well as the traditional way by hooking directly to a computer. So as you can see the throughput is much higher than the DOB series, and it's almost up to what our point-to-point -point series throughput is and the packet per second rate is a lot higher than the DLB. And you've got two gigabit Ethernet ports on your base station. One is a dedicated PoE in, and one is either a switch port or a PoE out to power another device. And these are 48 volt devices, just like our PTP. The available base station models are two. We've got the connector eyes, which allows you to add your own antennas, plus the 590 version which has a 17 dB integrated antenna with a 90 degree uh, beam width. The subscriber units are actually beefed up from what the DLB series is, so the around 535 megahertz is the processor for the DLB series, but we've got 720 on the subscriber unit versions, and we've got one gigabit port on the subscriber units. So these are the three different models. We've got a connectorized model of the subscriber unit and then two with integrated antennas, a 520 and a 523. So the, what we did with this is allow the point-to-point -point solution in a hardware and industrial hardware. And then we were using the protocol WJET5, which is similar to our iPole in the DLB series, but it is all proprietary. So you must use only our equipment when using the point-to-multipoint. And what we've added, which is similar to our rapid fire point to point, is the wizard for setting up, which makes it super simple to configure both your base station and your access points with one configuration without having to hook into individually each device and configure them. So it makes it really easy for configuration. The hardware base QoS also allows us to not put so much pressure on the CPU, and it allows that to be a separate component within the device that handles the QoS. And of course, we do the network management system through WNMS or, you know, standard SMP. So this is um, the enclosure. It's hard metal, and we've got the wizard, and we've forced security. Instead of having the option to do allow an open connection, it's a 128-bit encrypted connection. And we've got dual firmware, which we have on the DLB series, but the difference is with this series is it is choosable through the interface whether you activate the old one or new one so you can go back and forth, whereas with the other device, the DLBs, you had to flash it for which one you wanted to use. So this is kind of an idea of the DLB, you know, throughput and all the selections. And then we've got <clears throat> the point to multipoint, which we've got um, all the different end versions and it kind of compares what you're, you're compatible with with your subscriber units if you're using a 5N um, with your 520, 523, and how that compares with the integrated antennas. So we've got the parameters that allow for the wizard setup. There are some global parameters that have to be identical on both devices, and that's the link ID, the channel, the channel size, the 
the password, the country code, and the QoS. So that's pushed down automatically from your base station. It's controlled from your base station. But from your subscriber unit, you can put individual parameters on there. So you can give it a name, a physical GPS location, address, adjust the transmit power, automatic throughput control. It can have static IP addresses, and you can adjust the traffic and the speed limit. So this is what I was talking about with the active firmware versus the backup firmware. There's a link on the backup firmware. You can activate that if you prefer to go. If you're testing a firmware and you want to go back to the other one, you can activate the other firmware. And this is how the QoS works, and it's hardware-based. So this is um, actually designed through the hardware as opposed to going through the CPU. And then you can adjust your queues for different options. So you can put more voice or video or data ahead of different traffic. And this is the forced 128-bit encryption. Again, this is not something that can be turned off, and that is why that the link ID and the password has to remain the same. This is how it all works together through your base station. And because we do have a 48-volt connection, the power supplies that come with a rapid fire or any of the point-to-points are all compatible. And you, you can use the different types of 48-volt connectors, and it's all active power, so you can use a PoE switch. You can use the 48 volt that comes with the device or 48 volt that came with the rapid fire or the point to point devices. It's all compatible. And in addition, because it is all metal enclosure, we have a metal bracket for mounting. It's a very, very stable, hard mounting bracket. So this is good for like locations with high wind or anything that needs to be like secured down tight. And of course, we've got the different types of monitoring, SMT traps and the WNMS allows for error management and notifications of the hardware's specific states. What we've added to the maintenance area, which this looks very similar to the DLB, is the option to create a backup file for your slave devices so you can import your settings directly into a new slave if you don't want to go through the wizard. And then also the, the new thing where you can activate your old firmware or your new firmware. And the wizard is super simple, so when it comes up, the option for your base station, which we, you would do first, you give it the friendly name, the contact information, location, you set your password, and you set your networking, and then once you hit next, it's going to come up to the wizard to assign your subscriber units. Now these little maps, and this is very similar to the, the rapid fire, show you how you can connect up the subscriber unit in order for the base station to locate it. So it's a couple different, several different ways actually. You can do it wirelessly, you can do it connected directly, you can do it using the 2.4 gigahertz connection. All of it will work to get your base station to locate your subscriber unit. So once we locate the subscriber unit, it's going to be listed underneath the map, and you give it your friendly name, and you apply the configuration. So this pushes down your global settings from your base station to your slave unit so that it configures automatically. Once you're done with that, then you get the completed wizard, and it gives you an option to the settings that you've already set to confirm you know, what you want for all these settings. Now, all these settings you can come back to later and adjust. This is just your initial configuration to get them linked up. And so if you can see right now, these two are linked up, and you've got your subscriber units listed down here. You can click on these individual devices, and it pulls up their specific configuration the parameters that you can set to the individual subscriber units. So again, you can go back through and change all your friendly names, your physical locations, you can change the networking, you can adjust specifics to the subscriber unit. And keep in mind, when these global changes that you pass down, you have to type your password in to confirm you want to actually make these changes, because it's going to push the change down all the way to all the subscriber units. So these would be like changing your, your physical password, um, changing your channel widths, and changing your, your password uh, and your link ID. So all these would be global changes that have to be pushed down from your base station, and you have to sign in with your password to confirm you want to make these changes. And one option that's really, really good with the way that we're handling this with the wizard is the option to upgrade firmware and control this from your base station. So if you choose a file, in this case it's a subscriber unit file, it would list all the base stations, all the, all the subscriber units connected to your base station, 
and you can choose to do one or all of them with the new firmware update. It would also determine if you pulled up the base station firmware that is only available and only can flash the base station. So that's how the actual linked, uh, devices link up. And I'm actually connected to two of them right here. This is a 590 and then a 520 base station or subscriber unit. So if you can see, we've got the link connected here. The settings that you normally would set or pass through for your DLB series looks very similar other than you don't have the option to change your operating mode. That's locked in. And then your link ID, it's very simplified. And there's no options for passwords or anything because that's a master password. But all these devices you can log individually in. Again, slave locked down. It can't be anything other than a slave. And then you've got your link ID, which is identical. And from your information page, it just shows the same information as if you were in the DLB. You're connected to who you're connected to, your IP addresses. And if you want to configure, it'll pull up your subscriber unit information so you can change these settings. You do the limit of traffic, change your network, adjust the radio power. All this is controlled from your base station. You still have the tools that are built in for site survey and spectrum analyzer so that you can tweak the link and make sure that you are on the right channels. And under the maintenance section, this is where you can activate your old firmware or have your new firmware. And then you can do, again, create a backup of your slave configuration to push it out to a new slave or your regular backup and restore in your factory. So if you're looking at it and you're used to the DLB series, it looks very similar. What's really good about the gigabits um, is that it's really good for load balancing. And if you're doing a lot of video surveillance um, with the higher CPU on the base stations and the subscriber units, it's really good for like a high definition camera system. This is very similar to our rapid fire point to point. It's kind of built on the same base. So a lot of the options will look almost identical. So once you get com comfortable with one, you're comfortable with all of them. We're really, really excited about these uh, point to multi points. They're actually um, a lot of fun to play with. We haven't tested them here in this office to like full capacity, but our European office has, and they're always making improvements to these guys. They're really, really stable and sturdy. The point-to-point -point has always just been a point-to-point. -point. The option of making a point-to-multi-point has been something we've been waiting on.